Hey everyone, let me start this video with a quiz. I would name three stocks and you need to figure out what is common among them. Stocks are Bajaj Finance, Asian Paints and Avenue Supermart. Can you guess what is common among them? Well, they all have three things in common. First of all, they are all leaders in the segment they operate. Second, they are all massive wealth creators for the investor. And third, these companies have not generated any return for the investors in more than last three years. In fact, some of them have destroyed wealth. And that is when the Indian stock market has seen one of the biggest bull rallies in the history. If you look at Bajaj Finance, its share price zoomed from bonus split adjusted price of 5.75 in 2002 to levels of almost 8,021. That's nearly 1,400 times return on investment. So Bajaj Finance is not just a 100 bagger, but a 1,000 bagger stocks in just 20 years. However, after touching the peak in October 21, Bajaj Finance is currently at levels of around 6,500 in November 24. Then look at Asian Paints. Its share price zoomed from around 12 rupee 99 to more than 3522, creating around 300 times return. But today its stock price is down more than 30% and now trading at December 20 levels. Avenue Supermart got listed in 2017 and its share price zoomed around 9 times by October 21. But today it is down around 30% from those highs. The question is what really went wrong? Is there a fundamental problem with these companies? Or is it a temporary issue? Because if it is a temporary problem, this correction or consolidation could be an opportunity, isn't it? In my opinion, this correction with these three leaders is a great case study to understand how even the strongest of players can face challenges. So let's deep dive to understand the reason behind the fall in these massive wealth creators of India. Before we discuss the reason for fall, let's quickly look at why these companies created massive wealth in the first place. So if you look at Bajaj Finance, it tapped one of the most underrated consumer lending segment of India way back in early 2000 when the sector was in nascent stage. It started giving personal loans, consumer loans to white collar employees of India and consumer lending has emerged as the fastest growing segment within lending in the last 20 years. Of course, it's not just about tapping the market, it's about execution. They not only grew their business exponentially, but also kept very high asset quality with low NPA. Look at the earning growth. It was below 1000 crore in 2015 and today it is more than 15,000 crore. As a result, Bajaj Finance was the darling of every investor until a few years ago. However, the only problem with Bajaj Finance was valuation. During the peak, company touched price to book of 12, which was exorbitantly high as compared to its historical median price to book. So when market gives such a high valuation, it expects the company to grow at much faster rate. However, of late, there has been signs of slowdown in growth as compared to the market expectation. In recent Q2 result, Bajaj Finance net profit growth was 14% versus Q2 of FI24, mainly due to 77% jump in provisions. Apart from slowdown in earning, there is a concern around growing competition for Bajaj Finance. Geo Financials has already announced its entry into consumer lending. So due to slowdown in earning growth and increasing competition and weak quarterly performance, market realized that it's probably not worth paying such a high premium to the company. As a result, company's price to book has now fallen to below levels of five. In my opinion, market has already factored in the negatives and current valuations are quite reasonable to consider Bajaj Finance for long term. It has been a leader in consumer lending and would continue to dominate this fast growing space. In the long term, management has guided for 25 to 27% growth in AUM, profit growth in the range of 23 to 24%, net NP in the range of 0.4 to 0.5%, ROA in the range of 4.6 to 4.8%, and ROE at 21 to 23%, which is an excellent guidance. Yes, there can be challenges in the near term that might result in some more consolidation, but current valuation looks good to consider for long term compounding. Then second name is Asian Paints. Now Asian Paint has been an undisputed leader in the decorative paint category of India. They have such a strong brand that when you build a house, you only want the walls to be painted with Asian paint, even if you have to pay a premium for it. Because at the back of the mind, the thought process is you make house only once, so use the best product. The dominance of Asian Paint can be gauged from the fact that in FI24, it did a revenue of around 35,500 crore and profit of around 5,558 crore. Where it's its second biggest paint company, which is Berger Paint, did a revenue of 11,200 crore and profit of 1,170 crore. So Asian Paint is almost three times the next competitor and has been consistently growing its earning at an exceptional rate from 1160 crore in 2013 to 5,558 crore in 24. And look at the consistency in growth. There is no single year where company's earning has degrown except for COVID. And we all know that India is a growing economy with rising demand for housing as well as commercial building. So demand for paint is only going to increase over time. 
As a result, everyone wanted a pie in Asian paint shareholding. Hence, it always commanded a premium valuation. Now here you can see the P ratio of Asian paint where it used to trade at P of around 50-60 during 2015-19. till 19. But during COVID, there was a sharp spike in the P ratio. That's mainly because Asian paint uh, share price zoomed during this phase, but due to lockdown, the earning growth fell down. However, even after that, the valuation traded at very high levels. Clearly, those valuations were not sustainable. And then there was an announcement from Aditya Billa Group regarding foray into the paint sector under the brand name Billa Opus. Aditya Billa is the parent company of uh, Ultratech Cement, which is India's number one cement company. So when you construct a building, you first need cement and then paint. So it was a natural extension for Aditya Billa Group. Grassim has already spent 85% of uh, rupees 10,000 crore capex laid out for Billa Opus and is aggressively expanding across the country. That has changed the game for the Indian paint industry because Aditya Billa is now eating the market share of paint companies. And to defend the market share, paint companies like Asian Paint has taken a hit in the margin by adjusting the pricing and uh, uh, they are being uh, more aggressive on distribution as well as marketing. And that has directly impacted the profitability and earning growth. In the con call, Asian Paint Management has clearly mentioned about taking price reduction and intense competition with higher discounts. But this competition is not just the only negative factor for Asian paint. There are clear signs of slowdown in the paint sector where Asian paint has reported degrowth in volumes. As a result, Asian paint posted one of the weakest numbers in Q2 with a sharp fall in net profits. Even brokerage houses downgraded Asian paints considering the competition and slowdown. And that resulted in a sharp fall in the share price. Interestingly, today Asian paint PE ratio is at levels of 50, which is one of the lowest level in last 10 years. Here the big question is, is the worst already priced into the share price or there can be more pain ahead for Asian paint? So please understand that it's a structural change in the paint sector with intense competition from new entrant that is clearly looking to eat the market share. Hence, it's not going to be easy for Asian paint in the near term. So for now, Asian paints can be avoided. But I'm sure this correction will eventually create a great buying opportunity. We'll keep a close eye on the coming quarterly results to understand how badly this competition is impacting the uh, company's performance and how the slowdown in the industry is impacting Asian paint performance. In case you are a long-term investor but do not get enough time to track the stocks or the market, you can explore my weekly video series where I spend 8 hours nearly a day tracking the key events in the economy and identifying potential opportunities. In this series, I also share my own investment strategy and stocks that I'm buying and selling from my own portfolio. I also track more than 200 quarter results in an Excel tracker along with comments on each company. For more details, you can explore my website or the join button of my YouTube channel. The next company is Avenue Supermart, the parent company of DMART that has become a household name in grocery business of India. The biggest reason behind the success of Avenue Supermart was its low cost pricing model. It targeted one of the biggest segments within retail that included grocery, FMCG and essential household item. Apart from low cost model, it efficiently managed its inventory, supply chain, owned the real estate rather than renting and focused on cluster based approach for market expansion. And all these factors cumulatively resulted in exponential growth in company's earning. In last 10 years, company's net profit has compounded at 32% rate. On top of this, there are many years of growth opportunity ahead of the company as retail is still largely an unorganized market in India and there is ample scope for DMART to continue the growth. As a result, its share price zoomed exponentially since listing and it always commanded a very high valuation. However, recently there is one major threat that has emerged for DMART. It is the rise of quick commerce market that is disrupting the entire commerce industry of India. Today you can order anything at your doorstep within 10 to 15 minutes in metro cities with just a few clicks. And it has really disrupted the entire grocery and household market in India. The catch is, quick commerce has just started. It will continue to grow at an exponential rate and increase its penetration within the country. That is not that quick commerce will kill DMART business. In my opinion, both offline and online grocery and household market would continue to coexist as it is a huge market and there is ample scope uh, for growth for multiple players. However, the catch is the rise of quick commerce could potentially dent the growth of DMART. For instance, in Q2, company's revenue has grown at only 14% and net profit growth is just 6%. This slowdown is also due to uh, very high inflation in the country at the moment. Now the kind of valuation Avenue Supermart commanded, it created a question mark in the mind of investors. The question is, is it worth paying such a high PE to Avenue Supermart especially when there's a concern over rising competition from quick commerce industry? That's where Avenue Supermart has witnessed a sharp fall recently. 
With this correction, its P ratio has fallen to below 100 levels, but that is still quite high. Sure, it won't trade at a P of 25-30 because of immense growth potential and a very profitable business model. But if quick commerce can really impact demand growth, there can still be more pain ahead. At least I don't see any major recovery in the near term at current valuation. So in this video, we discuss the reason behind fall in share price for three massive wealth creators of India, Bajaj Finance, Asian Paints and Avenue Supermart. Interestingly, they all have three common reasons for fall in share price. First factor is recent slowdown in the industry. Second is rising competition. Uh, both these factors resulted in fall in revenue and net profit growth in the, of the companies. And third reason is the expensive valuation. When the earning growth reduced, investor booked profit as the valuations were too high for the performance they have shown. Now that there's a good correction, all three of them are already trading much below their median valuation. Going forward, I believe that all three companies would continue to dominate within the respective sector. The only risk is the rising competition and these leaders, how they tackle the competition. But that is something that only time will tell. Now tell me in the comments, what do you think about the future of Bajaj Finance, Asian Paint and Avenue Supermart? Is this correction an opportunity to add them or there can still be more pen ahead? If you find this video useful, do share it within your circle. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.